Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and are you counted? Ah, if this is your first, or like me, your eighth time to be counted, it is most important that you be counted. So today, we are going to talk to one of our favorite people, and you know we only talk to favorite people, Charlotte Poe, and she is one of the team leaders for the 2020 census. Now, of course, with the coronavirus, lots of things have changed. The whole world has changed. So we're going to talk to Charlotte about what is the census and how the coronavirus has changed the way it is counted. Not that it's everyone still has to be counted. Like I said, either if it's your first or like me, your eighth time to be counted. It you must must be counted. So Charlotte is going to talk to us today about what little things have happened, how the census is moving things around to be sure again that, that you are counted. So Charlotte, aloha, my dear, and I am so pleased to have you at to talk to us about the census and what, if anything, we can expect in the way of changes. Yeah, Aloha, Marcia. Thank you for having me on your show today. Um, it's very important, like you said, that we all get counted and participate in the census 2020 that is here already. So just a little bit of background, right? We had our first census in the United States in 1790. So it's been around for a very long time. And they use the census as a means to figure out where our population is. It's a population count and a household count. One, just to simplify it, is so that we can make sure resources go where they're needed and decision makers know where our people are at. And then at the congressional level, our census count is used to determine the number of seats we have in the House of Representatives. Then on the state and even our county levels, it's about how redistricting happens and how hundreds of billions of dollars come down from the federal level to the state levels and then get distributed across our counties and then into our communities where we really need them for schools, for education, for our Kupuna programs, for Medicare and Medicaid, right? Our first responders and emergency services. Our simple participation in answering the questionnaire helps to inform all of that. And these are resources that all of our communities need and can use, especially now, like you mentioned, uh, with what's going on uh, and the impact that our communities, our states, even the nation and globally is seeing with the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So for the census, what we've done is, our, there's two key principles that drive us right now. One is that the health and the safety of our staff and employees, and especially our communities, is imperative, right? So we've taken steps to safeguard our health and safety. The second principle is that we still have to deliver our census population, our census numbers, and that report at the end of the year to the President of the United States, all while still abiding by our mandate to count every person once, only once and in the right place, right? We need to make sure our counts are accurate so we get the right amount of resources and representation in the places that they're needed. Um, and then on the ground, uh, just to share with you a little bit about how it looks like for us here in Hawaii and our operations, all the field operations have been pushed back about two weeks, except for self-response. Self-response opened uh, March 12th, when people should have started seeing the mailers come in. And that is one of the primary ways that we are encouraging everyone to respond social distancing at its best. Go online if you're able to, or you can call in as well. 
Well, I did get mine in the mail and responded immediately. And it was like, what, two, three minutes. It didn't take long to, to fill it out. And um, I was impressed with the questions. Um, it, and, and, and I'm, I'm sure this is the first time, but it asked if, if we were married and if it were the opposite sex, uh, partner or whether it was the same sex partner. And I thought, wow, that's never been asked before, but how, how wonderful to think it all the way through that everyone, regardless, was counted. I, I, I was really impressed. Like I said, this is my eighth time to be counted. And uh, yeah, you know, anybody that's listening, eight times 10 e plus. So anyway, uh, I was impressed with how thorough the questions were, but how simple it was to go, yes, no, yes, no. It, it was really went very well. So, so I was, I'm, I'm pleased. Um, the reason I wanted to do it right away is so we, so I would have a sense of what I'm talking about when I talk to you. Um, what was the questions? And I'm sure it didn't take me five minutes to, to fill it out. And on the, uh, darn it, I put it up. On the form, they give you a code number and you fill in the code number and and then the rest of the page, page comes up. I thought that was so good a way of counting and so that you don't get duplicates. I'm, I'm sure there will be duplicates, but so what? Now, it says, it didn't say to me, it didn't have my name on it, but it had a postal. So that, now you'll have to explain that one to me about the postal service. And then it says to, it counted everybody in the household. So what does the postal service mean? Well, I'll show yeah. you. Yes, I'll show you mine. Yes. So it doesn't come right addressed to the person's name. It comes addressed to residents. So it could be anyone yes. who lives in that household it could respond for the household. Um, Let's go directly Eric, did we online. Lose? Oh, we can go directly online, even without that household ID that's printed on their um, attached to your physical residence address. Uh, if you go to my2020census.gov, that will take you straight to the question there. And I'm sure what you noticed also, Marcia, compared to some of the other questionnaires and censuses you've done, is it's actually a lot shorter this time, right? It so is. It's not yeah. as it's not as comprehensive or long anymore. And then, um, if you don't mind, I'm also give you the phone and number and the list of. Eth okay, yeah, the the list right. of ethnic the different choices. Oh my goodness, all of the different choices yeah. of of what again and this plus this plus this you know, in the ethnic yes. groups. Yes, so I'll come back yeah. to the phone number, but the ethnic groups, right, that helps to determine what ethnic groups live in different regions or different areas and helps to inform um, some of the programs that oversee funding, right? So census just collects data, right? about the importance of counting everyone 
because I have said it over and over and over. Anybody who's been listening to me for the last who knows how long, the importance of having a, another seat in the Congress, a third congressional district. Now, for any, for the, it's right now as we speak, we still have the same amount of representation in the Congress that we had when we became state. So, and we have grown exponentially since then. Uh, the state right now is divided into two congressional districts. CD1, which is Congressional District 1, which is urban Honolulu. The rest of the state is CD2, so that's rural Oahu, as well as all of the neighbor islands. Right. Now, does that make sense? Really? Does it really? So, <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit challenging, right? If, if, so hey, our, and if our neighbor islands have um, historically been hard to count, right, as well as some of our rural areas. So one of the primary initiatives that we enacted, especially for here in Hawaii, was to reach out to our hard to count communities, our native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders, those who take uh, second English as a second language, or it's not their first language. And then also, right, neighbor islands. Neighbor islands have high rural um, uh, residences, and they also don't get counted in the regular self-response. They get packets delivered to them, which has impacted, right, COVID-19 has impacted our field operations for that. However, like we spoke earlier, right, one of the ways that they can still respond is to go online to my2020census.gov and you can go on even without the letter. Or you can even do a phone call to 1-844-330-2020 and you can complete your questionnaire that way. What this does and speaks to what you were mentioning, Marcia, is that if we did see a, a, a large increase in our census count, right? The possibility does exist that we might be able to get a third seat in the House of Representatives. There's a formula they use, right? I'm not in, that's not my forte. However, I know there's a formula that they use um, by taking all of the seats divided by the 50 states population, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> okay, there's a report on this. But it exists, right? We don't know because we really don't have an accurate count for Hawaii right now. But you're right. Yes. If we could right. this year, do it, right? Yes, and especially if on the neighbor islands, like you said, there's certain right. communities that are hard to reach unless you're going door to door to door. And really, uh, and you know, we talk to people on the big islands and they're mm -hmm. having trouble just with cell phone connection, yes. much less internet. And right. um, so with this new, I don't know how you're going to do that with this, the coronavirus and going door to door. Is right. that going to be, is that going to be a problem? I, I presented would, but how do you it how has people? Right. It has definitely posed a challenge for us operationally. And um, some of the ways that we've looked to overcome this is we connected with our partners right away and looked at contingency plans, right? The first go-to is to take everything online, do virtually. But we also know, and we just spoke about it, that connectivity for internet as well as cell phone service is also um, a challenge for our more outlying rural areas on our neighbor islands especially, right? So we had depended a lot on community events, like some concerts, festivals, and fairs, things that would draw community into one place, a communal gathering. And with COVID-19, that mixed all of that plans, right? So yes. we have been working with all of our partners from grassroots organizations, uh, family foundations, churches, faith-based organizations, all the way up to the larger or uh, nonprofit organizations and service providers, the trust and businesses to reach those in our communities that we otherwise would have tried to engage during the gatherings, right? So grocery stores, people still go to the grocery stores, so we're reaching them. DOE is doing grab and go meals, so we're working with them to get reminders in for the parents. 
posting up banners and posters, right? It, it, we're kind of really going back to like old school, a lot of word of mouth and being um, connected via the phone if we cannot do virtual online or if it's not via the phone, right? It is coconut wireless in much scale, you know, very much scaled down. We're not doing the 25, 50 people, right? It might be the smaller families and one person, one person passing it on, you know? So old school with uh, new school technology, I guess you could say. But, you know, I think that's good because people have more faith in a person they know in terms of answering the question. Mm -hmm. And I think that that makes it very personal rather than just going online and trusting that it'll go somewhere. Where if, if you, like you're saying, if it's grab and grow or whatever this is, it's a very personal thing. And I think people then have faith that, that this is real and that it is working. And yeah. honestly, I think you're doing a great job. And we are just about out of time. And it's always a pleasure. And uh, I promise Annie we will be back next month. And yes. So this going. So thank you, Charlotte. Just a pleasure meeting with you. And we'll see you soon. And for thank all you of you so listeners, be sure you fill out your form, go online, pick up the phone, any way you can do this. Call your relatives on the neighbor island. Be sure that you tell them, answer the sentence. Thank you so much. Aloha. See you next time.